Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, everybody, welcome to our Team Believe and Team Infinite joint team call for November 17th of 2016. It is Thursday night, and I'm really excited to, hear, uh, to be here tonight. Uh, myself and Nicole Buchanan are here to amp you up. We have a lot of great ideas for things that you can do to get going uh, with the holiday season, which is going to kick off any second now. We all know Thanksgiving is next week. And one of the things we want to spring on you is a lot of good ideas on how to have a post-Thanksgiving uh, clean eating group. And Nicole, I'm going to uh, let you uh, take the microphone over here. And why don't you tell us a little bit about what's been, uh, what's been kicking around in your head, and we'll go from there. Okay. I had came up with this idea. The other day, I think I was watching a webinar in my um, practical social media group. I was watching a webinar about free groups and my free group that I did for the crock pot clean eating did well. I had a really great free group, but I think it went too long. So then I was thinking there's things, Thanksgiving's coming up and the holidays are coming up and December's gonna be a hard month only because everyone is so focused on the holidays and a lot of the mindset is, I'll get started after the holidays because I've already had a lot of people say that to me. So I thought, well, with Thanksgiving coming and everything like that, I'm looking at my calendar as we speak. Why don't you do like a three day, I don't wanna call it a cleanse. I was thinking of a cleanse, but I can't do the refresh. I've tried the refresh and personally I can't do it makes me ill. So I was like, I could do a three-day clean eating. And I was doing a search online and I found an article with some really good, it was a, it's a three-day, they call it a cleanse, but it's not a cleanse. It's a three-day clean eating menu. And it actually uses the leftovers from the dinner for the lunch the next day. And it's really, really simple. So I took it and I asked my assistant to make it into um, three days of posts. And I thought I would do, starting on the Monday after Thanksgiving, do three days, um, cutting out, you know, you can have a cup of coffee in the morning if you need to, but cutting out any soda, any alcohol, because after, you know, eating so much for the holidays, everyone's gonna feel gross. So that's my thinking is to do it this three-day group and then help people trans transfer into a challenge group for December because between Thanksgiving and Christmas, there's about three weeks. That's a round of the 21-day fix. Why not do a round of the 21-day fix between now and um, between Thanksgiving and Christmas? So I think that would be a really good way to help people just get a Start whenever you do a free group. It's, um, whenever you do a free group, it's um, so easy to invite people to a free group because who doesn't love anything, you know, something for nothing? And it gives people the chance to really experience what a free group is all about. So my game plan is this: I'm good. I have been posting. And in my posts, I have been just adding in, like, I don't want to be a New Year's resolution or today. I actually went running for the first time in months because um, I'm going to be running the New York City Marathon next year. So I was like, well, I guess I better do something. And in a lot of my posts, I've just been breadcrumbing and leaving and planting the seeds of, I don't want to be a New Year's resolution. -er. I'm going to start now. Why wait? for the new year. So that's kind of been like the vibe that I've been putting out there for people. And, um, I, you know, if you're, if you're breadcrumbing these little posts every day, it's that, that jab, jab, jab. And then when we're ready to throw our hook, why don't you join my free, you know, three day clean eating group. Um, right after Thanksgiving, I post it with a fun graphic. I think I posted a really funny one in both of the team pages of the lady on the treadmill. <laughs> I love that picture. That was awesome. I love that. So that's going to be my hook. So I'm going to throw that hook 
probably sometime, I think on Monday, I think on Monday, I'm going to start, I'm going to throw that hook and then I'm going to keep breadcrumbing my posts and just sharing maybe recipes, a clean eating recipe every day of, you know what, this is something that I'm eating, Thanksgiving's coming, I know I'm going to be eating a lot on Thanksgiving, so I'm going to eat clean right now. I have, I'm going to do a free three-day group starting the Monday after. So I'm just going to breadcrumb my posts from starting on Monday, the 21st, all the way through Thanksgiving weekend, and then adding people in, adding people in. And then on Monday, the 28th, I figured I would start this three-day um, post-Thanksgiving clean eating group and then help people transition into a 21 day fix group with me for December. But it's so important to just really, you know, with a posting, having that posting strategy, Melanie Mitro has a great video out there about breadcrumbing your posts. And that's where I learned so much just by watching that. So that's a, a really good suggestion. I'll find it and I'll post it in the group, but every day just, you know, post something about what you're eating that's clean and throw in there. I don't want to be a new year's resolutioner. Thanksgiving's coming. Um, you know, you're going to want to get back into shape, you know, you know, just breadcrumb all of those things. So if anyone wants to join my three day group, I have, I'm really excited for the meal plan. I'm really excited that it's going to be short. And we're going to get people into that group and move on to the 21-day uh, fix group. But the key is starting now, starting tonight even, doing that one post a day about a workout or about clean eating and talking about how even though the holidays are coming, you're not going to get on off track and you don't want to be a New Year's resolutioner and just plant those seeds. Um, I read somewhere that it takes people – seven to eight times to hear something before it clicks. So that really is why we throw these jabs before we throw the right, you know, before we throw that right hook of the invite to the group. That's so true. I, I think it's great that you just made that comment because many coaches and, you know, myself included at one point, I think a lot of coaches give up after the first or second um, approach, if you will, so I think what you just said has a lot of substance to it because it's important to understand that making that making, using those breadcrumb steps like you're saying I think is a great way to help someone gradually understand and grow comfortable with you as the coach. This is the likelihood that they'll want to join your cleaning group. Uh, Nicole, I have a question. Uh -huh. uh, I think we right, let's back up a second. Um, when I've run free clean eating groups, it basically is something that is a group where a person does not have to make me their coach. It's not mandatory. And I think you do the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. I think yeah. This is really important because, you know, up front on the stage in the center of the spotlight, the clean eating group is a great way to get people healthy again, get them back on track after Thanksgiving. But there's a really, really wonderful ulterior motive going on here. This is your chance to open up your soul and show people what you're like as a coach and how helpful you are and how wonderful you are and how you can do great things to help people and motivate them. They don't have to do anything that involves signing up under you or buying a workout or getting a challenge. The idea is this is kind of like a, um, a free sample. It's a sample of your yes. great personality. And it's a way for you to get people to be comfortable with you. And I'll use myself as an example. Let's say I, uh, I just met Nicole and you know, let's say she did the opposite and she, she kind of threw up on me and said, Oh, I need you to give me your coach. I'm, you know, I can help you. You want to do body beats. I should make, you know, I would be, I would be taken, I would be taken back by something like that. But if I was going through my newsfeed and I started to see that Nicole was really making the effort to 
show people some ideas that she had, and she's posting recipes. I was kind of, that, that sparked my interest, and I suddenly start to follow her. And then if she were to make this offer that she has a free clean music, I would probably ask her more questions. And upon learning that I don't have to sign on the dotted line or make a commitment or, or make her my coach or anything, because I have no idea what a coach means, it's a great way for me. Welcome to Nicole's Great House. And understand what she does in her group. And wouldn't you know it, after those three days, after after this clean eating group is over, I've lost a couple of pounds and I'm so happy Nicole helped me. I'm probably going to be interested when she eventually does say to me, hey, you're really great in this group. Why don't you join my main group? Or why don't you consider joining this challenge group? Or, you know, have you thought about doing the 21 day fix? So, well, like you said, I think this is a great way to segue the larger picture and give people a chance to see what you're worth and about making you their coach. Um, let me, um, let me ask you another question. What is your opinion on how big a clean eating group should be? Like, I've, I've had them with anywhere from like five to maybe 25 people. And I, I found, personally, I found that when they're too big, going. What, what's, what's your opinion on that? Um, that's good. Um, it's funny you asked that because I was going through. My crock pot group is 400 people right now. Wow. Yeah. And I'm looking and I'm going through it and that's great. That's all well and good, but I'm not connecting with those 400 people. There's just a small handful of people that I've connected with. So that's something I have to work on is finding that um, magic number, finding different ways to connect with them. Um, I think as a lot of time, something Chris said once about, um, Free, about a free group is like clean eating. Um, posting the menu for the next day, the night before, because that's going to keep people coming back every night. They know they have to get that menu. They have to get the menu for the next day. So those are all little tweaks I've made. I like big groups only because if you do get those rock stars in it and are posting, you know, the more people you have, the more potential rock stars there are. You're creating more interaction. That's why I like doing free groups with other coaches too, because, you know, there's more people doing that together. So like my, like my crock pot group, yeah, there's 400 people, but I think a lot of people just came into the group to get recipes and be done with it. It was, I have, that's something I have to work on. And I learned, I really have to work on making the connections and building the relationships with the people in those groups. Like I have the greatest posts in the world, but if I'm not connecting with people, it doesn't matter. So, so this is going to be a group that's going to use leftovers from Thanksgiving. I think you said, no, no, it's going to be like, it's going to be like you make a dinner, one night and then the leftovers from that dinner you use for lunch the next day. oh okay yeah. i'm glad you clarified that oh sorry yeah now will we also have like a shopping like a grocery list of some sort or is that like yeah my assistant put it together the way she did it she put nicole i don't know why she put nicole buchanan fitness on the top you're more than welcome to copy it or whatever or use mine that's fine i think send it to you to upload okay awesome um now you said you had 400 people. Were most of those people, people that you had attracted through your life page or were they, um, oh, okay. Um, I know many coaches don't have a life page and it's probably a good idea to, to get one going, especially because, you know, the holidays are coming and uh, as Nicole can vouch for, a life page is a great way to, to get publicity uh, into the newsfeed about what you do. And it's also a great platform for you to kind of let your hair down and talk more about your fitness and healthy lifestyle just so you can have your personal page be a little bit more about your own personal lifestyle and not all the time about fitness and uh, nutrition. Right. Um, so I, um, uh, Nicole, have you ever seen the, there were a couple of times when team motivate when our coach Chris Palmer kind of had a, um, um, explanation of what to do with clean eating groups. Um, there's a coach named Rosa, I think, that put together this PDF. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, 
is that something we would incorporate into the picture? Is that something that we would maybe refer to or we could recommend to coaches to just use as a guide? Um, what, what's your opinion on that? Because I know it's more of a broad brush. I would use it if you're doing your own clean eating group. I would use it like my three day one. I just wanted a three day menu. I create, I wanted to find something different. So like for a three day one, I, that's what, yeah, I would use that. But something else to just be careful of is if you're doing a clean, free clean eating group, every coach in the world does clean eating or some kind of fit. So there has to be a way when you're posting about it, you really want to think about who you're targeting with your posts. Most of my Facebook friends are moms, are teachers, are runners. Um, they love Disney because that's who I attract. That's when those are the groups that I'm in. So when I'm writing my posts for my free clean eating group, there has to be that um, niche, so to speak, to it. There has to, you know, it has to, your, your group somehow, you have to put a spin on it somehow to set it apart from all other clean eating groups that are out there. So maybe, a, I'm well, sorry. I have, a, I have another question for you. Do you think it's good for coaches to run their own clean eating groups? Or do you think it's better if they work together? Um, I've done it both ways. What, I've done both. I think if you're not getting a lot of people, I think it's good to run it with another coach or, you know, if you're new to running a clean eating group, do it with another coach, um, you know, support each other. I, I like both ways. I'm, you know, I'm a teacher. I'm a bit of a control freak when it comes to this kind of stuff. Cause to me it's lesson planning. So that's another weakness of mine is to let go of that control. That's something I have to work on, but I love, like I, I work with Dawn and we do great. You know, we, my coaches and I, we all post the same way and do the same kind of things. And we've only gotten to that point where we work so well together is because we've done so many groups together. We kind of like are in sync, so to speak. Well, that makes a lot of sense. How, how many days did you say the cleaning group would run in this instance after Thanksgiving? I'm going to do three days. Okay. I'm going to do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And then I'm going to use Thursday and Friday as like a wrap up day somehow. I also am going to do, for the duration of the group, I'm going to do one live video a day in the group talking about some kind, something about gratitude. So I was thinking Thanksgiving and gratitude and the holidays. So that could be a spin that you put on your group. Maybe you don't want to do just clean eating. Maybe, maybe you want to do, I know Julie was saying how she has like, she's thinking about a holiday survival guide. Like maybe you want to do clean eating, but how I know one year I did like clean eating and I did like how to survive um, holiday parties. And every day I gave a tip about how to survive a holiday party or a work gathering and, or I gave like a recipe for a great healthy holiday dish to take. So you can put all kinds of spins on it. So it's not just the clean eating. I think that's a great idea. Um, and I think what you said is, is so true that each coach can really personalize this to whatever level they feel is best suited for them. Uh, using Julie again as an example, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't have to be like a specifically, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be like a clean eating group per se. I know Julie said that she had a bad experience with that. Um, I, I know Charlotte, Charlotte's on the call. I'm so happy to see you. And Charlotte, I know you have done crock pot challenges before. Um, have you had, I, I'm gonna like, just kind of put you on the spotlight for a second. Have you had success with crock pot? Uh, yeah, I wanna hear, I wanna hear. What? I wanna hear. <clears throat> yes, I had quite a few people um, when I did my crock pot group, especially people that were in my niche, like busy people, mothers, teachers, I'm kind of like Nicole. So it worked for me. Oh, okay, I think that's super. It's, um, I have had, I personally too have had success with clean eating groups. Um, I find that 
they run best for me when I keep the group somewhere between like 10 and 15 people. Mm. Um, and I think one thing that everyone can consider too is, and Nicole, I don't know if you've done this, but you have an option to maybe give away some sort of a prize to whoever has the best results. And there's something that they never talk about that kind of springs up at the last second and I'm betting bottom dollar it's gonna happen again this year. Uh, you know, Beachbody always has this like Black Friday sale. Mm. You can grab programs for like, I don't know, you can get, like last year I remember getting things for five or six or seven dollars. And you know, if you're a coach that's on a tight budget, that's a great way to go pick up a couple of doodahs that you could then use as prizes for your clean eating group. If you want to, you know, motivate people even more, you could tell everyone, listen, I'm going to have this free clean eating group and we're going to give away a great prize. Um, you know, I don't know what that prize could be, but you can even offer Shakeology packets. Um, yeah. It can be a t-shirt, but there's this, uh, you know, I think one of the greatest assets that coaches have is when they kind of give something and, I think this is a great way for people to really appreciate what you are uh, able to do. Um, Nicole, mm -hmm. I have another question for you. Um, how have you dealt with clean eating groups or food challenge groups of sorts when people have asked you, you know, could they do their own diet and still be in the group? Um, That's fine. You know, I want them to experience the support. The support and what I do as a coach. So... Mm -hmm. I think that's great. Um, have you ever had an experience where someone said to you, can they make substitutions? Um, and from my own experience, and guys, this is so true. You have to remember, you're a buddy coach. You're not a nutritionist. You're not a um, fitness trainer. You can be all those things. You, you can if you want. If, you're, if that's your profession, that's fine. Or if that's something you want to pursue, that's totally cool. But here's the thing. If, if you're running a clean eating group and somebody calls you out and says, listen, I, I don't like avocados, what can I use instead? You can come into our main coach groups and say, I have a little situation, somebody needs a substitution, can someone help me make a recommendation? Or you can use that secret website called Google. I'm just making the point that you can, you can keep the pace of the clean eating group and you're gonna find that it's less about I should say it differently. It's, it's more about the fact that you're helping people, that you're offering suggestions and motivations and a push, and it becomes less about the actual structure of what you're trying to do for those three days. And I'll tell you, it's, um, this is, Nicole, this is a great idea because Thanksgiving is going to put a lot of people out. Um, I have a bunch of uh, links that I like to post around Thanksgiving time and a couple of them stick out the most that the average person will consume close to 5,000 calories sitting on Thanksgiving Day and that's just crazy so it's um what other suggestions would you have for what we should do as coaches to promote this um you had mentioned like uh, piecemeal feeding onto your new seat. What would be like a good thing for a coach to do? Should they make a video talking about it or should they um, post or what, what would you like to say about that? I don't, you know, it's funny. Um, with videos, I don't get a lot of response on my videos. I don't know because I know I'm the type of person, if I see a video, I don't want to sit and watch a video. I want to see a picture and read something and move on. I don't know if it's because I'm just a bit, I don't know. So I'm thinking maybe that's my target market. Maybe they're like me and they don't want to sit and watch a video. I don't know. My workout videos are super, super, super short. Um, so those are fine, but I won't sit and watch a video of someone talking on Facebook. I think that's, um, that's a great comment. And I think, I think what you said actually opens the door to each coach deciding what works best for them. Mm -hmm. I will tell you guys something, and this is very important. And if you make a video to talk about your clean eating group or your three day challenge or your crock pot challenge, or if you take a picture and you're in it or something like that, be very careful about what's in the background in that picture. Uh, you know, you got to remember you're promoting yourself and what people see is what they're going to really understand about you. And this morning, uh, before I went to work, 
was looking on Facebook in my newsfeed, and Nicole, I see this, I see this video from another coach who I'm not going to name. She's doing the new core day force workout, going at it. But in the background on her uh, coffee table are bags of Doritos and <laughs> beers, and I'm like, what the, what the hell? You know, it just doesn't. It I, like he didn't sell me on the idea. So if you're going to make a post like Nicole saying, and you're going to some advice and, and make something and hold it up in the picture. Just make sure there's not like a quart of Ben and Jerry's behind you or something like that. Be very careful about what you do. Um, I know you make amazing pictures. Your your posts, your workout pictures are just like <clears throat> it's just get people's heads. And Nicole, I saw a um, a post you made. Um, more like decorated with awards and ribbons and stuff from different runs or something like that. And then you, you know, you had this other one, it was black and white. And, you know, it's just like, I think, I think you guys you can really take advantage of what people are going to see and use that to kind of connect with people. And I would say this, if you're, if, if you're not sure what to do, do both. I mean, make a post with a picture and do something. You have kids or pets, bring them into the equation somehow. Also, if you want to do a video, like Nicole said, if you do do a video, keep it short and simple. Um, just let it kind of catch people's attention. And it'll happen. And the, um, the other thing I would say is you can also start to privately message people. You could try to, you know, use the um, method of forming people to offer this option to them. As far as inviting people in your own workout groups, uh, Nicole, what's what's your take on that? If, if somebody already has you as their coach, do, do you be looking to invite them into something like this? Or do you feel this is just for people who it depends i usually do because they're they know how my groups work and they'll be posting there and that will you know increase engagement so i do i, I let them come in i think that's a great idea too because let's say you have somebody in your workout group and you're saying to yourself why am i letting them in my free clean eating group what's the point you might be exposing them do something that suddenly makes it trigger in that person's mind. Wow, this is fun. I'm, I kind of like this. Hey, Nicole, what, tell me some more about coaching. What's in, you know, this might be a way to not only attract people who are interested in becoming your client, but this might be a way to get people in your team interested in the general idea that maybe they too could coach. So there's a real pro to that. Um, I think, Nicole, do you think we should have like a, a group that any coach can join or should we like make small huddle groups like with different coaches? Like, I'm not sure if I'm saying the question right, but do you see this as being something that would be like one main group that coaches could have the option to participate in? Or should we encourage coaches to keep it What's your opinion on that? Well, why don't we put it out there to both our teams and get a feel for who wants to do it? I think that's a good idea. Um, and let me ask you another question. How often do you like to run these types of groups? Do you do it every week or every two? Um, or? I, was, I have my, my tips to share, so I'll put that in okay. there. Um, I do a free group every month. Because I, I want to bring in, I want to connect with new people. And free groups are the easiest way to connect with um, new people. So I will do a free group every month. My free groups are usually when I change it up. So I'll, I did like crock pot groups. I did um, this one for right after Thanksgiving. And then I keep my regular challenge group the same. So like I'll, I'll change up the themes for my free groups and then my regular challenge groups, I usually try to do this, keep the same. But one thing to remember though, is that I, I, I run Facebook ads from my like page. So the kind of people that I'm getting, it, it's different when you're inviting through Facebook ads. So if somebody, if there's anyone 
who wants to learn how to run Facebook ads from a like page, I'm more than happy to share with how I do that. There's a whole science behind it. And it's now where I go to bring people in. So I'll do a I'll do an ad for a themed free group and then I convert those people to my paid challenge group. I think that's a I think that's a great tool. Um, what do you typically pay for an ad when you do something like that? It depends. Last month was a bad month, so I spent too much. I spent too much money on my ad, but I usually like when you do Facebook ads. This might be over some, you know. I don't want to be too overwhelming, but you should be getting under thirty cents per engagement for your ad. So, anytime somebody engages with your ad, whether they click on it or they like it or or whatever you should be getting under 30 cents. So my Facebook ads, I usually get anywhere between 10 to 17 cents per engagement. So this month for my paid challenge group, I had about, I think my ad reached over 4,000 people and about 500 people engaged with that ad. And then I've had conversation, I'm still in conversations with people. So it's a whole different animal, it's a whole different beast, um, like pages and Facebook ads. In terms of this free clean eating, for this month, I'm not running an ad for it. I'm going to create an event, a Facebook event, and I'm going to go through my friends list and I'm going to invite everyone on my friends list that I've had conversations with, that I've talked to, people who have been in my free groups before but haven't wanted to commit to a challenge pack. So this month, since it's a short group, I'm going to just create an event and I'm going to run it and invite my friends from previous free groups and anyone on Facebook that I have spoken to in the past. So that's, I think, a great way to do that is to just create an event and invite people to that event. I think that's a wonderful idea. Um, and guys, as far as the day-to-day -day, uh interaction in a cleaning group or a three-day food group, challenge group, crock pot group, uh, whatever you like to call it. Um, it it's, you can be very creative. You can have a lot of fun with these kind of groups. I personally, like, uh, I have found some really clever memes that have to do with clean eating. Just for example, when I had done cleaning groups, um, I found one picture of um, like a little boy covered with peanut butter and it had a really cool caption. So I'm just saying you could, you could really do things to make it fun for people. Mm -hmm. um, you you could encourage the people in your in your group to post pictures of what they're doing, and you should encourage them to talk about things, even if they fall off track. Even though it's only three days, you know you're going to have a couple of people who just slip off the wagon. Um, one thing I like to do when I run like a five day group is I'll tell people. You know, why don't we challenge each other? What's like a favorite cheat meal that you like to have that you wish you could be eating if you hadn't been in a five-day clean eating group? And let's talk about ways to make that cheat meal healthier. I've gotten some great feedback and some really cool interaction with people when I do something like that. And, you know, like, like we're saying, the great thing, as always, about a group is it's always a private setting so when you're inviting people to a group, you can, in addition to telling them that it's not gonna you know cost them uh, they don't have to you know register you you can also tell them look private facebook group i'm not sure if you know how this works but anything we post is only seen by the people in the group you know, let your hair down, you can have fun with this, and you don't have to worry that it's going to interrupt your new news feed. I think people are going to be very open-minded to that. Um, Nicole, what, what do you think would be like a, like a next milestone for when the clean eating group, when the three-day group is um, completed? What would you do at the end of that group in terms of like, reaching out to the people that had gone through it? What, what would you, how, how would you like, maybe we could talk about what we could recommend the coaches when they get to the end of that. I think when you get to the end, um, I have this in my, should I share my tips, my five tips? Cause that was one of them. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Okay. So I'll do that. 
So I have a list of five tips for um, free, clean eating group. So if you're going to do like um, an after Thanksgiving group, the first one we talked about was to start breadcrumbing your posts right now, throwing those jabs, mentioning how Thanksgiving is coming, the holidays are coming. We don't want to be New Year's New Year resolutioners and start planting those seeds. So when you do put out your invite, when you do throw that hook and you say, I'm going to be having a free three-day clean eating group, you know, after eating all the cake and pie and turkey and stuffing from Thanksgiving, three days, super easy, wants to join me, you've already planted those seeds. So that's my first tip. And then the second one is, um, anyone who comments or likes on your posts about that, that invite or about anything you post about clean eating or about um, working out, I always, always, always message them. And I always say, thank you so much for literally taking a second to like my post. I know it only took a second of your time, but your support means a lot to me. How are you doing? And I ask a question to start a conversation to lead into an invite to my free group. So that's my second tip. My third tip is to create an event from your personal page and to invite anybody that you have had a connection with in the past who may have been in previous free groups, any friends that you have, supporters that you have, anybody, don't prejudge and invite them to your um, clean eating group. When they respond that they're going to attend the event or they're thinking about attending the event, message them and you know start that conversation. Um, when you do start your group, have a pinned post at the top, welcoming everyone to the group, and then give the people joining your group in that pinned post a couple of action items. So ask them maybe where they're from, uh, what their goals are, why they joined the group, maybe to post a picture, just to start the conversations going, just to start the interaction. And then my last tip, and Lou mentioned this, was um, having some kind of system where when people post and are engaging, they get points and maybe they win a prize. So that also increases engagement. And that brings me to the last tip is at the end of the group, making sure that you connect with every single person, even if they weren't that actively involved. There's a lot of people who just watch and they don't post. So just because they're not posting doesn't mean they're not watching. So it's really important to connect with every single person, ask them what they liked about the group, how it helped them, what are their goals to get through the holiday season and into the new year, and then to start that invite process to a round of the 21 day fix. That's it. I think that's great. Um... You know, I'll tell you, I, I kind of have a couple of things to add to that. Um, when I've invited people to these kinds of groups, uh, you know, sometimes you do get rejection. I will tell the person, hey, look, it's, it's perfectly fine. I, I completely understand. But I will always say, do you know anyone that might be interested in doing this? And that does two things. It kind of exponentially helps you recruiting because you now have this other person who's going to go forward and possibly bring people to your group. It also somehow changes the tone and the attitude of the person who just told you no, because it didn't, you didn't flinch. They said no. And you're like, Oh, okay. You know, anybody else that might want to do this and they're going to go away and they're going to say to themselves, you know what? I think I might just do that. Hey, Nicole, can I join your cleaning group? And, you know, I'm, I'm adding somebody to the resistance probably tomorrow because they, um, I just went through this with this person for like a week. This, this great guy who I knew on Facebook for a little bit of time uh, me to the nail about making me his coach. And then at one point I said to him, I literally said to him, I was like, look, it's completely fine, but if you know anyone who's interested in letting me help him, my group is amazing. On and on and on. I like that. And he messaged me this morning. He's like, you know, I'm, I'm going to definitely make you my coach. I'm ready to do it. How do I do it? And 
He's doing the email transfer. So I'm excited about that. So the same thing applies here, guys. Free group, you, you really have anyone have no excuse for not wanting to join this group, but people are gonna get stage fright because they're, they're not gonna be completely comfortable with the idea. Um, and then, you know, other things are gonna happen. You're gonna have that one or two people who wanna join on day two or something like that. And just you know, like, go easy on the range and you'll be fine with that. And like Nicole is saying, when, especially when this group is over, privately message everyone you can and give them a big hoo -ah and a big thank you. And you could even ask them, you could say, you know, hey, and guys, always ask the person if they are okay with you saying something on their personal wall because it's going to show up in their news feed when you tag them. And hopefully, they'll say yes. Again, this brings them one step closer. They might want to join your group, and that starts the whole process of a, of a great relationship with this person, which can help you with the coach. Nicole, mm -hmm. would you like to add to what we were saying? Because what we could do is um, we have like 10 minutes, and maybe we will we'll open the, for, open up with some questions. Yeah, time. let's do that. That's good. Okay, I'm going to unmute everyone. Um, does anybody have any questions? Crickets. <laughs> okay, I'll call people out. <laughs> Julie Stumbo. Are you there? Yep. Julie? I'm here. Hold on. Oh, we we want to know. Okay, can, can you hear wanna, me? Yeah, we want to know if you have any questions uh, regarding what we talked about. Um, I don't have any questions, but I do like the idea of the three-day um, Thanksgiving queen eating group. Um, that's all I can think about at the moment. I like to. Oh, well, you know what? I'm sorry. No, I like that you have that idea of the holiday survival. I think you could totally like connect that and have that be Thank your. You. Yeah, I, I think, and, and I've seen coaches do like um, a, a three or four, like like a water challenge group too. Just to I've done that, yeah. Drinking water. There's, you could really do anything. Um, Shell, if you have any questions, I know you have a lot of questions. So. <laughs> I don't have a lot, but I do have a question about um, the Facebook ads. Have you guys really felt like the ads were worth it? I mean, worth the time and the effort and the money? I mean, did you get that many engagements that actually were people, you know, signed you up as their coach? I, it has completely changed my business, but I will just say this. If you want to go down the road of Facebook ads, take the time and make the investment in really learning the system of how to craft an ad, how to run an ad. There's a whole science behind choosing your target audience and real, I mean, I can put you in touch with the, the um, I'm part of the Practical Social Media University. I can send you the link to my webinar. No. To me, it changed everything. It changed everything for me because I honestly, I don't have the time. I don't have the time to go and find people every day. And I knew that Facebook ads, the, the top coaches are running Facebook ads and that's how they're getting these huge numbers of leads. And I, I, I knew that that's where I wanted to go. So I really invested the time and I invested the money and I invested in really educating myself about how to do it before jumping in and doing it. So that would be my number one tip in terms of Facebook ads is really learn the system before jumping into it. Uh, Nicole, is it something that you could maybe post in? One second, Lou. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Uh... <laughs> Maybe, maybe it's something that you... I'm could, sorry, say that again? Do you think it's maybe in the next few days you could post something that could direct coaches to how to find the uh, information that would teach yeah. them? 
Oh, okay. I'll find my, I have the link to, to the webinar that they featured me on. I mean, I, I'm going to be upfront and honest. I pay a monthly fee. I'm a part of this university. My, my blog is linked to them, but they, it completely changed my business. Okay. That's great. Um, and I was thinking too, maybe you could give like a screen capture of like what a typical ad looks like that you do. And yeah, you, know, you know, I know, I know I hear you and I are like crazy busy all day long and trying to get on the phone together. It's just nuts. So maybe you could just like do a screen capture and just explain in a, in a post in both of our groups. Guys, this is a, an example of an ad that I've run. And I think people will then see it and understand what they're going to be looking to. Um, to yeah, it, it really starts with, you have to start if you're, I mean, this is a whole nother call and a whole nother conversation. Sure. It really starts with finding your target market niche. You have to zero in and really find that target market niche. And once you do that, you're golden. That drives everything. That drives creating your ad. It drives your audience. It drives everything. So that's so important. Is really, and we see that posted in like Motivate and Team Next Level. And Josh Spencer talks a lot about it. It's like really branding yourself as a coach. And that goes back to these free clean eating groups. What is your brand? Are you a mom? Are you a teacher? Are you know, what is it that you have to offer people just like you? When you, when you create that post for that free clean eating group, who are you targeting? What's your brand? I think that's great. Um, does anyone have any more questions? Okay. Um, Nicole, is there any closing tip that you would like to give to everyone or anything else that you want to add at this point? No, I don't think so. It's just, you know, it's so easy this time of year to get caught up in the holidays and it gets so crazy and it gets so busy and we're all tired and we're all, we're all, you know, it's wanting. I'm muted. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. No, 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 it's okay. I think even as coaches, we want to say, we'll start after the holidays. We'll start in January with our coaching business. We'll really focus on it come January. But you know what? The seeds are planted now for January. So this is going to be a hard time of year. But if we push through and we are consistent and we're still putting out valuable content, once January comes, that momentum is already built. So don't wait for January. It has to start now. If you have goals for your business, for your coaching business, it has to start now. I think that's that, my last tip. I think that's a great thing that uh, what you had just said. And guys, it's don't feel like you're alone because the, the first few months of the fall can be very tough. Mm. Um, you know, a lot of people are, um, suffering from the repercussive effects of paying for a great summer vacation or what have That's you they kind of get caught up in the life happens with everything. So this is going to be a great way to jumpstart your coaching efforts and your business. And it will, like Nicole saying, it will definitely take you on a wave that will be, will be much more beneficial to you. And in every way, shape and form, it's really the right thing to do and to go forward with this now is going to really help you. And then like Nicole saying, by the time you get to January, you'll, you'll have so much momentum. It will just carry you right through into the, into the spring event, if not even further. So um, I want to thank everyone that was on this call. Yes. Thank you. We're going to probably post some information in both of our groups that will uh, flesh out what we had talked about a bit. Um, at some point, I'm going to just bring back into the picture the the, the amazing PDF that uh, another coach, Rosa, had done. You can use as a guide for understanding for these types of groups. And again, thank you everyone for being on this call. If you have questions, post them in our coach, and we'll go from there. And I think that's it. So, as you know, next Thursday is Thanksgiving, so we're probably not going to have a call. And we'll, um, we'll have a call the following week. But 
let's let's keep this momentum going. You've got you've got a real advantage here in that holiday times are when people fall off the wagon with their nutrition and they're gonna be banging on your door. This is gonna be a great thing. And that's pretty much it. So guys, everyone have a super night. Thank you so much for being on this call. I'm going to screen capture at one point, and I'm going to post it in both of our groups. If you want to share it on your profiles or uh, in your workout groups, please do so. Definitely create excitement, and we'll go for that. So, I'll also post this recording as soon as it takes. Okay? You guys Thanks, Lou. You're welcome. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you.